Hello, everybody. Hello, hello. <clears throat> I'm getting myself all super. I am at school today, and I am going to be here. I'm trying to get some things done, but I wanted to just kind of uh, say hi to you guys. <sighs> so anyways, to, this is number 25. This is number 25 of St. Bernard's Books with Mrs. Brixen. I'm Laura Brixen, Principal of St. Bernard's School in Beaver Falls, Minnesota. And it is Friday, April 24th, 2020. And it is good to see everybody and to have you guys come have you back. Uh, sorry we weren't here yesterday. I know yesterday I ended up having a meeting during this time, and so I just couldn't make it. So I'm so glad that I'm back. I'm back and able to talk to you guys. And with that, I know I definitely well, I want to be able to start with you guys with our songs. I got to get them up and ready. Please remember to say hi in the comments so that I know that you're here. I'm writing that down right now. <laughs> Okay, and a second. I got to fix my my hearing aids. Okay, so with that, we're going to get started with our song. If my if my phone gets back to normal, maybe, maybe not. <laughs> I'm not sure. Okay, okay. So let us begin. First, we have to get past the ads. Here we go. Good to see it. All right. Let me see if there's anybody else here. I think there's still hopefully some people coming on. Just a reminder, just a reminder, if for some, whatever reason you are unable to make a day and you still want to, <gasps> Mrs. Zare is here. Hello, Kendall. Um, if you ever miss a day and you want to come back and check it out, please go to the site that's got the library in it. Um, and I, I have to double check and make sure that Wednesdays is in there. But just remember, we did not meet yesterday on Thursday, the 23rd. We did not meet. And so you, because I had, I had a meeting, so you didn't miss anything on that one. But we do have some beginnings of some new jokes. New jokes. Yes. Okay. What do you call a dinosaur that is sleeping? What do you call a dinosaur that is sleeping? A dino snore. Huh? Pretty good. A dino snore. Dinosaur. Yes. Gotta love it. Gotta love it. Dino snore. What do you call a dinosaur that is sleeping? Dino snore. Share that with your parents tonight. Okay? Share that with your parents. <laughs> anyway. We did have a wonderful thing, and I wanted to be able to share this with you guys. Um, hold on just a second. Now, last night, Mrs. Zare and Mrs. Brickell made this amazing, 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 as you can find it here, found this, made this amazing video. Um, I know I put it on Facebook. I have it on Twitter. I have it on Instagram. I emailed it to your parents. <laughs> but I want to show it to you again today. Um, anyways, because this one I just love. It's always in our hearts. And everybody here at St. Bernard's just wants to 
Um, let you guys all know that we miss you so much. We really do. And we love you so much. And we're working very hard, very, very hard to help you out and get you past this process. Because I know that yesterday the governor announced that we will not be coming back for the school year. We'll come back in the fall. That's what I'm thinking. You know what I mean? And and things like pre-K kindergarten or fifth grade graduation, we're going to try to figure out something for that. And but we're going to be still doing um, our fun online things and distance learning and packets and stuff like that um, until the end of May. So it's about another month or so, which is hard to believe. And um, but anyways, it's just kind of interesting that the same day that the governor of Minnesota announced that, that that's the same day that um, Mrs. Air and Mrs. Burkell came out with this video. I just thought it was wonderful because I really needed to see it myself. Oh, Kendall says hi. Oh, I see the dinosaur emojis there, Kendall. Oh, Aurora's here. Aurora, you gave me candy and pudding. I've already eaten the pudding. <laughs> I had a pudding today. Thank you. I gave it to Carol. Mrs. Air, you have something waiting for you when you come. And um, it's for Mary, too. So thank you, Aurora. Anyway, so here comes this video. I hope you enjoy it as much as I do. I will fight, I will fight for you, I always do, until my heart is black and blue, and I will stay, I will stay with you, we'll make it to the other side. Like lovers do I'll reach my hands out In the dark and wait for yours to Until I can wait for you I'll wait for you So I hope you like that. Oh my gosh, I just get emotional every time I watch it. So thank you. Um, 
I miss you terribly. And but we will see you. We will definitely see you soon. And we can see each other this way. So make sure you do lots of comments. Um, oh, we got Carol. Carol Amundsen is on. Hello, Carol. Carol, hopefully you got to see yourself on the video as well. Um, but anyway, we are going to be setting up all sorts of fun things. Next week, I'm going to set up a series of like lunches with the principal um, for your just your class. And so maybe we'll do like a Zoom and we'll get all of the like all the fourth graders together or all the second graders together, or the preschoolers together, and we'll all have lunch or something like that. So just to remember, um, if you come in, make sure you write something in the comment, because otherwise I don't know if you're on, if you're watching or not. But, you know, so I guess Hermrex are on. So hello, Hermrex. Hello. <laughs> okay. Oh, thanks a lot, Mrs. Aaron. Now I'm all emotional. Okay. Anyway, I'm going to get started again with the Tales of Fourth Grade Nothing by Judy Bloom. We are on chapter six, Fang, it's town. We're on page 55. Remember Fang? Fang is what <laughs> Peter now calls Fudge. Fudge, yes, because remember, he knocked out his front teeth. So now it looks like he's got fangs. Phillips are on. Hello, Phillips. Um, Phillips, I have your script. And the books are out waiting for you by Mrs. Brickhill's room, too. <laughs> and I will be here till five if anybody needs me. Anyway, so Fang hits town. <clears throat> Fudge liked his new bed a lot. Yeah, it was just one problem. He fell out of it every night. By the fourth night, my mother and father got smart. They pushed the bed up against the wall and surrounded the other side with chairs. Now there was no place for Fudge to fall. But every morning, my mother found him curled up in one of the chairs. My father said they could have saved their money since Fudge was so happy sleeping on an old chair. On Saturday, we had to go to the dentist. He wanted to check Fudge's mouth again to make sure everything had healed all right since his flying experience. Dr. Brown is an old friend of my father's. They went to school together. He's always saying he takes special good care of me and Fudge because we're chips off the old block. The old block being my father. His office is on the other side of the park. It's near Madison Avenue. My mother said, we'll make a day of it. And wouldn't that be fun? I'd rather go to the movies with Jimmy Fargo, I said. We'll have such a good time, my mother said. The three of us will go out for lunch and then we'll get new shoes for you and Fudge. I have been out to lunch with Fudge, I reminded her. He's growing up, Peter. He knows how to behave now. I'd still rather go to the movies with Jimmy. Well, you're coming with me, and that's that. I wasn't looking forward to my day, and Saturday morning is always the best day of the week. Every Saturday morning, I get to clean out Dribble's bowl. Sometimes it's fudge is very good. I let him watch. I do it in the bathroom. First, I take Dribble out of his bowl and let him crawl around in the tub. I'm afraid to put him on down on the floor. Somebody might step on him. But in the tub, I know he's safe. Next, I take the rocks out of his bowl and I wash them. The last thing I do is I wash the bowl itself. I really scrub it. I even rinse it two or three times to make sure the soap is out. When I'm done with that, I put the rocks back in and fill it with just the right amount of water. <coughs> Excuse me. After I put Drill back into his bowl, I feed him. Usually, he goes right to sleep on his favorite rock. I guess running around in the bathtub really makes my turtle tired. <laughs> Today I finished with Dribble just in time. My mother was rushing, mumbling about getting us to Dr. Brown's office in time for our appointment. When we were outside, we took the Crosstown bus, then walked a few blocks to his office. As soon as the nurse saw Fudge, she said, how's my favorite little patient? She gave him a hug, a little book to read. To me, she said, good morning, Peter. It burns me up the way that some people treat Fudge. He's not so special. He's just little, that's all. But someday he's gonna be nine years old too. I can't wait till he is. And then he'll know there's nothing so great about him after all. Soon the nurse said, Fudge, Dr. Brown is ready for you. Come with me now. Fudge took the nurse's hand. Dr. Brown has this rule about mothers in the examining room with kids. They're not allowed. Mothers 
are a big problem. Dr. Brown told me once. I agreed. I looked through a National Geographic magazine while I waited. After a few minutes, the nurse came out and whispered something to my mother. I looked up wondering what the big secret was. Then my mother said, Peter, Dr. Brown would like you to help him with fudge. Help him? He said, I'm no dentist. The nurse said, Peter, dear, if you'll just come with me, I'm sure everything will work out fine. So I went with the nurse. Well, what do I have to do? I asked her. Not much. Dr. Brown just wants you to show Fudge how you open your mouth and how he checks your teeth. Uh, what do I need to do that for? I asked. I don't need a checkup yet. I just had one last month. Your brother won't open his mouth this morning, the nurse whispered. He won't, I whispered back. No, he won't, she said again. I thought that was pretty funny. I never considered refusing to open my mouth at the dentist office. When he says, open, I open. When we reached the examining room, Fudge was sitting in the big chair. He had a towel around his neck and he looked all ready for action. Dr. Brown was showing him lots of little things and explaining what he does with each one. Fudge kept nodding, but he wouldn't open his mouth. Ah, oh, Peter, Dr. Brown said when he saw me, would you open up your mouth so I can count your teeth? That's what he tells little kids he's doing, counting their teeth. Little kids will believe anything. I went along with Dr. Brown's joke. Open my mouth very wide. Much wider than when I'm in the when I'm the real patient. He put his mirror in and said, wonderful teeth, just beautiful. A regular chip off the old block. Such a shame that your brother won't open his mouth like you do. Him so, Fudge said. No, Dr. Brown told him, you can't open your mouth nearly as good as Peter. Can't so, see? Fudge opened his mouth. No, I'm sorry. Oh, you're... I'm sorry, Fudge, Dr. Brown said. It's still not as good as Peter. So Fudge opened his mouth really wide. Count teeth! He said, count Fudgy's teeth. Well, Dr. Brown pretended to think about it. Count! Fudge shouted. Well, he, Dr. Brown said, scratching his head. I guess as long as you're here, I might as well count your teeth. So he checked Fudge's mouth. When he was through, Fudge said, see, see, just like Peter. Yes, Dr. Brown said, smiling, I can see that you're just like Peter. He gave me a wink. I like the way Dr. Brown tricked Fudge into opening his mouth. So when he was through examining him, I whispered, couldn't you make Fudge some like false teeth until his grown-ups come in? No, he'll just have to wait, Dr. Brown said. But it looks like he has fangs, I told him. You better not say that in front of your mother, Dr. Brown said. I know it, she's not too big on fangs. Dr. Brown thanked me for helping him. My mother made another appointment for Fudge. The nurse kissed my brother goodbye, and we left. That wasn't so bad, was it, Peter? My mother said. It could have been worse, I admitted. We headed for Bloomingdale's where we get our shoes. There are five salesmen in the children's shoe department. Two of them my mother does not like. She thinks they don't measure my feet correctly. All they care about is selling shoes, even if they don't have the right sizes in stock. The other ones my mother thinks are okay. There's one she likes a lot. His name is Mr. Berman. I like him too because he's funny. He usually makes believe that the right shoe goes on the left foot or that Fudge's shoes are really for me. Anyway, when Mr. Berman waits on us, buying shoes is almost fun. Today, Mr. Berman spotted us right away. He always remembers our names. Well, if it isn't the Hatcher Boys, he said. In the flash, I told him, Fudge opened his mouth for Mr. Berman. See, ah, gone. His teeth, Mother explained to Mr. Berman. He knocked out his two front teeth. Well, congratulations, Mr. Berman said. That calls for a celebration. He reached into his jacket pocket and pulled out two lollipops. He handed one to me and one to Fudge. Oh, Fudge said, lolly. Mine was a root beer flavor. I hate root beer. I like root beer. But I think Mr. Berman, anyway, 
I'll save it for after lunch, I told him, handing it to my mother. She put it into her purse. Budge got a lemon lollipop. He ripped off the paper and started sucking on it right away. Now then, what did it be, boys? Mr. Berman asked. My mother answered, brown and white saddle for Fudge and loafers for Peter. Okay, Peter, let's see how those feet have grown. I slipped out of my old shoes and stood up. I stuck my left foot into Mr. Berman's foot measure. Then he turned it around and I put my right foot in. That's another good reason why my mother thinks Mr. Berman is good at selling shoes. He measures both feet. Some other salesmen only measure one. My mother says feet can be different sizes. And even on the same person, it's important to make sure the size fits the biggest foot. What color loafers, Peter? Mr. Berman asked. Brown, I said, same as my old ones. When Mr. Berman went to the back to look for shoes for me, my mother noticed a hole in the toe of my sock. Oh, Peter, why didn't you tell me you had a hole in your sock? I didn't know I had one, I said. Oh, I am so embarrassed. Sock, Mom, why should you be embarrassed? Well, it looks terrible. I mean, to come shopping for shoes with a hole in your sock. That's just awful. Can't you just hide it a little bit? Why should I hide it? Oh, I just lost it. Where should I hide it? Try to get the hole between your toes so it, so it doesn't show, my mother said. I wiggle my sock around, trying to rearrange my hole. Mother sure worries about silly things. Mr. Berman came out with two pairs of loafers. He likes to try different sizes to make sure I'm getting the right one. One pair was much too big. The other pair fit fine. Wear or wrap, Mr. Berman asked my mother. Wrap, please, she said. We'll wear the old ones home. I've never been allowed to wear my new shoes home from the store. Don't ask me why. But my mother always has the new pair all wrapped up, and I can't wear them until the next day. When I was finished, Mr. Berman untied Fudge's shoes and measured his feet. Brown and white saddle shoes, my mother reminded him. Mr. Berman went to the back and returned with two shoe boxes. But when he opened the first box and Fudge saw the saddle shoes, he said, No! No what? My mother said to him. No shoes, Fudge said, and he started kicking his feet. Oh, don't be silly, Fudgy. You need new shoes, my mother told him. No, no, no! He hollered. Everybody in the shoe department looked over at us. Oh, here's the perfect size, Mr. Berman told Fudge only one shoe. Wait till you see how nice these new shoes feel. Fudge kicks some more. It was impossible for Mr. Berman to get the shoes on his feet. He screamed, no shoes, no, no, no. My mother grabbed a hold of him and he was wiggling all around. He managed to give Mr. Berman a kick in the face. Luckily for him, Fudge had on only socks. Now look, Fudge, my mother said, you must get new shoes. Your old ones are too small. So what kind do you want? I don't know why my mother bothered to talk to him like he was a regular person, but when Fudge gets himself into a temper tantrum, he doesn't listen to anything. At that time, he had thrown himself onto the floor where he bit, beat his fists against the rug. What kind do you want, Fudge? Because we're not leaving here until we get new shoes. My mother said it like she meant it. I figured we'd be there for the rest of the day, or if not, for the week. How could my mother have been embarrassed over a little tiny hole in my sock and then act like nothing what much was happening when her other son was on the floor yelling and screaming and carrying on? I'm going to count to three, my mother told Fudge, and then I want you to tell me which shoes you want. Ready? One, two, Three, Fudge sat up, like Peter's, he said. I smiled. I guess the kid actually does look up to me. <laughs> he even wants to wear the same kind of shoes. But everybody knows you can't buy loafers for just such a little guy. <laughs> they don't come in your size, Mr. Berman told Fudge. Yes, 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 like Peter's, Fudge hollered. Mr. Berman held up his hands and looked at my mother to say, I give up. But my mother said, 
I have an idea. She motioned for me and Mr. Berman to come closer. I had the feeling I wasn't going to like the idea, but I listened anyway. I think we have to play a little joke on fudge, she said. What do you mean? I asked. Well, suppose Mrs. Ber Mr. Berman brings out a pair of saddle shoes in your size. And, oh no, I said, you're not going to get me to wear saddle shoes, never. Let me finish, my mother said. Mr. Berman can bring them out and you can try them on. And then Fudge will think that's what you're getting. But when we leave, we'll take the loafers. That's mean, I said. You're taking advantage of him. Since when do you worry about that, she said. Since now, I told her. Look, Peter, my mother said, checking her watch. It's 12 o'clock and I'm starved. Me too, I said. Well, then, if we ever want to get some lunch, then let's try my idea. Okay, okay, I said. I sat back in my chair when Mr. Berman hurried to the stockroom again. Fudge looked up for me from his position on the floor. Like pitas, he said. Yeah, sure, Fudge, I told him. Mr. Berman came back with a pair of brown and white saddle shoes, my size. I tried them on. Did they look ugly? See, Peter's nice saddle shoes, my mother said. Now, Fudgy tries on his saddle shoes. Fudge let Mr. Berman get him into his new pair of shoes. See, see, he said, see like Peter's. And he held up a foot. That's right, Fudge, I said, just like mine. You can sure fool little kids easily. Where on a wrap? Mr. Berman asked my mother while Fudge walked around in his new shoes. A wrap, of course, she said. I wonder what my mother would tell Fudge tomorrow when I wore my new loafers. Oh, well, that really wasn't my worry. It was her idea. Then Fudge was back in his old shoes and our package was ready. Mr. Berman gave my brother a striped balloon. He offered one to me too, but I refused. How could he think that a person in fourth grade might want a, a shoe store balloon? That wasn't so terrible, was it, Peter? My mother said as we left the store. It wasn't, I said. Well, it could have been worse, Mother said. I suppose, I answered. We went to Hamburger Haven for lunch. We sat in a booth. Fudge tossed his balloon around while my mother ordered for him and then for herself. I ordered my own lunch. A hamburger with everything on it and a chocolate milkshake. Fudge was getting a kitty special, meaning a hamburger without a roll, some mashed potatoes, and a side order of green peas. When our lunch was served, my mother cut Fudgy's hamburger into tiny pieces, which he then shoved into his mouth with his fingers. Then she handed him a spoon and told him to eat his mashed potatoes. But instead of eating them, he smeared them on the wall. See, he said. I thought you told me he wouldn't behave like that anymore, I told my mother. Fudgy, that's naughty. You stop it right now, my mother said. But my, but my, but Fudge saying, Eat it or wear it! And he dumped a whole dish of peas over his head. I laughed. I couldn't help it. He looked so silly with the peas falling all from his hair. And when I eat and laugh at the same time, I choke. So I choked on my pickle. And my mother had to whack me on the back, which gave Fudge another chance to spread mashed potatoes on the wall. That's when the waitress asked my mother, Did we want anything else? No, thank you, my mother said. We have more than enough now. She wiped off the wall with her napkin and told Fudge he was very, very naughty. Not me, Fudge said. Not me. Yes, you, my mother told him. Why can't you eat like Peter? See how nice Peter eats. Fudge didn't say anything. He just stuck his fork into his balloon. It popped. He screamed. Oh, God, what more balloon? What more, more balloon? Shut up, I told him. Can't you ever act human? That's enough, Peter, my mother said. But she should have slugged him. That would have teach my brother of mine how to behave in the hamburger hut. We took a cab home. Fudge fell asleep on the way. He had his fingers in his mouth and made a slurping noise. My mother whispered to me, Our day wasn't that bad, was it, Peter? I didn't answer. 
I could just look at the taxi window and decided that I would never spend a day with Farley Drexel Hatcher again. And that's where we'll quit for today. That's where we'll quit for today. And that, that, that has us done with chapter six. Don't bring us up to chapter seven. Chapter seven. Oh, I'm just looking at all of these things here. Okay. All righty. Well, so good to see all of you guys here. So what we're going to do right now is I want everybody to stand up. I want everyone to stand up. I'm trying to get to my, my videos here. Whoop, lost it. <laughs> okay. And what we're going to be doing is, hold on a second. I'm trying to find it. Ah! I lost it. Okay. Here's one of our fun songs coming like a Christian rock. It's 10,000 Reasons. So when everybody stand up, Carol, you got to stand up too and do some dancing. I know Mrs. Zair is standing up, right? All right. So let's get some other people up. And here we have 10,000 Reasons. Emotions. A second i accidentally welcome 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 so you're just Ooh. kind of getting ready uh, i actually got into <laughs> ali's live show update anyway um that was near the end of the song anyway so i hope you have a wonderful day i'm gonna be missing you very much and let's see if we can try to get back to that um we will see you have a wonderful weekend go outside I want to see pictures of you guys making hearts out of some sort of natural stuff. Okay. Show me some examples of how you make a difference with that. Um, since my phone seems to be going a little weird here, we won't be doing our final song. Have a wonderful day and we will see you later. Bye-bye guys. <laughs>